I know he did what he did. He had to do it. He died the way he lived, a courageous man who was always looking out for the other man and responsible and who was a man of courage. And so now I can say, you know, I am so proud. I am so proud. On Monday over on Channel 4, the extraordinary tale of the only people to walk out from the rubble of the World Trade Center, telling the story of the miracle of Stairway B, Monday at 8. Next, though, an update on those heroic New York firefighters and chilling images of a day we'll never forget. We don't often think about words, we simply say them. But just for a moment, think about this one. Fair. Of course, there's all the fun of the fair. We all want a fair share. Yep. And we all want a fair deal. At Britannia Building Society, our customers own the business and get a share of the profits. 50 million pounds last year. Beat that. Britannia, building a fairer society. From behind, it looked like Peter. But yelling that nickname. Twice. I swear. I swear it looked like him. It is a very funny nickname, though. The uh, receptionist seems to think so. Auris, the new Toyota. You'll feel different inside. Well, it all started like this. If it looks like the enemy, shoot it. How about shot blood? I'm just a boy in a dress. That's all I see in the mirror. What's this for? More for this for the British Channel? <laughs> The word to remember is more. That is mojo, baby. The boy's got skill. Bad skills. More 4, the best of Channel 4, plus drama, documentary and film from around the world. On Tuesday at 10, true stories and Michael Moore's bowling for Columbine. But now on More 4, the No Day Brothers update on their multi-award winning documentary about a day none of us will ever forget, 9-11. On September 11, 2001, these streets of New York changed forever. We all remember where we were that September morning. We remember how we heard the news, what we felt, what we saw. Tonight, you're gonna meet three young filmmakers who also witnessed what happened that awful day. Only they saw it from the inside, and it's a view the rest of us haven't seen until now. I'm Robert De Niro. Last year, two French brothers, Jules and Gideon Naudet, set out to make a film about a rookie New York fireman. They had no idea they would become eyewitnesses to the defining event of our time, but that they would capture the courage of those who faced hell on earth and the miracle of a lucky few who survived. The story begins last summer. With the help of a friend and firefighter, James Hanlon, the Naudet brothers were allowed to follow the men of Engine 7 Ladder 1. It's one of the oldest firehouses in New York, just a few blocks from here. For months, the material they shot was routine, uneventful. September 11th was no different until 8.46 that morning. Engine 7 Ladder 1 was one of the first to arrive at the World Trade Center. 
Jules Naudet was with them, and his camera never stopped rolling. It's the only footage from inside Tower One. What you're going to see has been edited with great care. Still, some of the language is rough. After all, these men had never been tested like this before. This is the story of how the city's bravest rose to their greatest challenge on September 11th. When you work in a firehouse seven blocks from the two tallest buildings in New York, you get to know every step, every staircase, every story. This morning, Jim, couldn't get too close to that razor blade. Oh. I'm James Hanlon. I've been a New York City firefighter for nine years at Ladder One downtown. Last summer, the summer before 9-11, there were days we'd go to the Trade Center five times in a single shift. My point is, we knew those towers as well as anybody. But nobody, nobody expected September 11th. On that day, guys from my firehouse, my best friends, were some of the first firefighters in the Tower One after the plane hit. What they did that day, what everyone there did, was remarkable. Chief! And almost as remarkable, it was captured on videotape inside the tower, beginning to end. And tonight, you'll see all of it. The tape was shot by two brothers. Jules and Gideon Noday. They're documentary filmmakers and old friends of mine. <laughs> I don't know. They always say there is always a witness for history, I guess. We were, that day, we were chosen to be the witness. The strange thing is, the tape, the whole story, it, it kind of happened by accident. I mean, Jules and Gideon didn't mean to make a documentary about 9-11. We wanted to make a documentary about a, a firefighter. That's how the whole thing got started. Nine, ten, one, two, three. Four. More to the point, the plan was to follow a rookie. On the job, we call him probies. The idea was to show how a kid, almost, uh, become a man in nine months, which is their probationary period, where they have to prove themselves. Let's go, guys. Hurry up in the apartment. We teamed up, and by last June, the three of us were out at the fire academy shooting the training. Help. Help. And trying to decide which one of the 99 new probies test, test. would be the perfect probie. My name's Paul Denver. John Carroll. Antonios Benetados. T Tony for short. I was a police officer. For a while I was a, a pizza man actually, an Irish pizza man in the Bronx. 
This is my first job. It sounds kind of cheesy, but I always kind of wanted to be a hero, and this is really the only thing you could do that you can do that. Immediately, we're like, okay, this is the kid, this is the kid, let's, let's go. We got Tony assigned to my firehouse, one of the biggest in the city. It's Ladder One, plus a whole other company, Engine 7. I'm so glad I, I took this job. Can't beat it. What, what you don't actually it's wear it. That's what it says. They are the greatest, incredible guys. They're guys who fought some of the worst fires you can imagine. What's up with that shirt? What? What's the matter? With you? Soon, they'd face the unthinkable. Question was, would Tony be ready? I'm terrified. This is what I want to do, but it's it's scary. I just hope I can I can do everything that I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm still worried about how I'm going to actually react when there's fire flying over my head. Here it goes. What's your first name? Tony. Tony. You know you, you come in on uh, Thursday, right? Thursday? Yeah. I wasn't sure of that. Thursday night. I am now, sir. Do you need to sit down? <laughs> sir, thank you. Want to stop calling me, sir? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm a little bit nervous. All right. I just I want to make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do. All right. Thing is, when you're a probie, what you're supposed to do... We got to do the sheets. We change the sheets in the mornings. ...is pretty much everything. More news and traffic coming up. It's 6.22. Then we start up top and we wash the rig down. Do you have an iron at home? Uh, actually, I do not. Sir. Are you in a lot of trouble? Uh, well, so Take two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm doing decently. You know, I'm still waiting for a fire. That's all. I'm just waiting for a fire. And uh, I think that'll that'll you know make a pretty big difference. Yeah. Engine. Matter. Should we grab that big long thing from the back too? <laughs> thing is, guys say there's two kinds of probes. Getting closer. Black clouds and white clouds. When a black cloud comes to the firehouse, that probie, he brings all the fires in the city with him. White cloud, just the opposite. No fires. Don't get me wrong, there were fires. Just not when Tony was on duty. The kid was one very white cloud. Tony was nervous, of course. Terribly nervous. And as the days would pass, uh, Tony, waiting for his first fire, wanted to prove to the other guys, and even more to himself, that he was going to be a real great fireman. Uh, Tony, yeah. I'll back. Yeah. The guys were not going to make it easy on him. No one was singling Tony out. We do it to every probie. We're we gonna break your chops till you laugh about it. Right. Because that's how we do it. Right. We'll tease you to death until you start laughing. Right. No problem. You gotta love this one. No, I... Sooner or later, and you will. Yeah. But before you can love it, you've got to learn it. Now, say you got up there now. You got your helmet on, your bunker gear, and you, you got to get your mask on. How are you going to do that without letting go? Uh, I don't know. Okay, stop moving, guys. It's hot in here. Hurry up. Make a quick sweep. It's hot. The next time you do this, you're going to be more cautious. Right. You did, you did fine. Right. All I want you to do is learn to relax. OK. Not bad. Not a bit. Now that handwriting's getting better already. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Dave, baby. Yes. OK, thank you. For two weeks, I got 
$672.25. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You couldn't even buy a six pack with that. Holy crap. It's starting pay, you know? If I wanted to get rich, I would have become a lawyer. But I wanted something that I'd be able to live with for the rest of my life. This I can live with. A lot of the guys feel that way. If you need to get up in the morning and look yourself in the, in the mirror and, and say you, you, you're doing something with your life. Somebody's in there. Hit the door. You do your job. You risk your life to help people. And to be part of a family at the firehouse. Just making some uh, onions and mushrooms for the... <laughs> Tell me one other job where everyone sits down to dinner together every night. Now, Steve, you, you got to be tired now. <laughs> Let me help you, Steve, because I think I'm the only guy that helps you in this firehouse. <laughs> um, everyone, first eat the rhubarb stick, then go on to the foie gras. It works really well. A landmark series following ten exceptionally gifted children into adulthood. I'm more intelligent than my dad. No more IQ is 100, and he's got an IQ of 170. <laughs> I really want to be marked as gifted for the rest of my life. I might just be the only human being in a sea of robots for what I know. And I do, I can get stressed. And gifted children must, by the very definition, be abnormal, be different from the rest. It can be a curse. Another chance to see Child Genius, Sunday at 10 on More 4. Three new Batoli pasta sauces made with natural ingredients. Your complete guide to the Rugby World Cup, from the first kick to the final whistle. Free in the Sunday Times. Introducing the all-new Chrysler Sebring. Featuring a Boston acoustic sound system as standard, an optional multimedia sat-nav, climate control as standard, and an elegant interior with leather seats as standard. The new Chrysler Sebring, it all comes together beautifully. Mouth ulcer? Remember your last one? Mm. This time, don't put off treating. Send in Bongella Cool straight away. It helps stamp out germs, quickly soothes, and reduces swelling. Don't suffer. Send in Bongella Cool. The DFS sale is ending with fantastic savings on everything. 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 It really is your last chance to get double savings on a great range of sofas. You get three years free credit, and as always, the first year is totally payment free. You can get great sofas like this for as little as £498. And luxury leather for just £799. You better be quick. The double saving summer sale ends Sunday at... DFS! It's this easy to record your favourite TV series. It's this easy to record your favorite TV series. It's this easy to record your favorite... More is our triple promise on car insurance. One, with more than you can protect your maximum no claims bonus for the life of your policy. Meaning two, we won't raise your premium just because you make a claim. And three, we'll give you a 10% discount when you call, or even more online. Call 0800 300 800 or visit us at morethan.com for a 15% discount. 
came out of the blue, really. I just wasn't expecting it. It was enormous, huge. Everything went black. I don't remember much about what happened after. He had to be resuscitated. I was scared of it. I wasn't expecting a price like that. I should have gone to spring savers like Jenny next door. She's in Malibu now. Specsavers Complete Glasses start at just £30, and with our clear price policy, you can work out exactly how much your glasses will cost in three simple steps. something like that and I'm still still no fire but it'll come probably when I'm asleep and not ready for it that's when it'll come it's 2 30 in the morning bro <laughs> you can sleep you can all right trust me when the alarm goes off they'll come and get you I'm <laughs> Listen, Tony was getting closer, but for the record, that was some flame. It wasn't a real fire. Hey, Chief, come see his first fire. If they're all like that, it's going to be a fun 20 years. Man, this fire over here. Here's the fire, see? Start the line, put out the stakes. <laughs> By the end of August, we knew that we had a great cooking show, and there were no fires. Waiting for a job, that was a very big concern. But every time we would talk with some of the senior guys, they always told us, well, be careful what you wish for. Yesterday, a 27-year-old firefighter in Staten Island, he was stationed, went to a job, and uh, he passed away. Uh, well, uh, we'll go to the f f funeral on uh, Saturday, and uh, what can you say? I look back to last summer and it doesn't just seem like a different time. It seems like a different world. At the time, we didn't think there could be anything worse than losing a single firefighter. I mean, looking back, we were all just, we were kind of innocent, especially Tony. A bunch of the guys were talking about what different parts usually get them at the funeral. When the coffin went past, that was, that was, that was a little rough. I don't know. I know I, I hope 
hope it's my last one. starts to collapse, you gotta get off. You know, you gotta really improvise. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Basically, you have to be on the top of your game. Right. You're not the OV. You're on the top of your game. This right. is not a joke, this job. You know? Right. It's a lot of things to think about, you know? And tunnel vision, focus, right. really, because that's what's gonna keep you alive, and that's what's gonna give you the opportunity to help anybody else. Right. You ready to go down? Fire or no fire, Tony had learned a lot that summer. Sure, he had a ways to go, but we'd teach him. Far as we knew, there was plenty of time. A few days later, Jules cooked a French dinner for the guys. At least he tried to. Decided to cook leg of lamb, which I told him for a long time was one of my specialties. I think he cooked one, and we really needed at least five. Where's Frenchy? A couple more meals like this, we'll be able to share shirts. All right, all right, I got a small piece, so what? Find my mistake. We stayed up late, just telling jokes and busting chops. This is it, that's all that's left. This is the best part of the meat. Even though the guys were making fun of us because we didn't cook uh, enough, we're all having a great time. We're getting uh, accepted. We all joked all night long. It was really a great night. Little did we know. It was the night of September 10th. Firemen live to help others live. It's that simple. Every day they wait for the call. Every day that passes without that alarm is a blessing and a burden. They know it's only a matter of time until they'll have to put their lives on the line. So they wait and they wonder. For the men of Engine 7, Ladder 1, the waiting and the wondering had lasted all summer. By early September, the filmmakers had captured so much about life around the firehouse, except for one thing, a big fire. There's a superstition among firemen. When you go too long without any fire, be prepared. Something big is coming. What you're about to see is how brave men work under stress, surrounded by chaos. They trained all their lives for this moment, but nothing could have prepared them for what was about to happen. temperature about 80 degrees great weather for the primary election tonight clear and cool low 60 in the it's begun to sound like some sort of a cliche but really september 11th started out like every other day eight o'clock in the morning don't throw the fat away please. the day guys were just coming in i was off that day 13 guys from my firehouse were on Around 8.30. Engine, ladder. I believe the run came in. Get the run for the gas leak, or an odor of gas in the street, actually, I think it was. It's just lisping on in church, odor of gas. Yeah, I don't think anything of it. You just, you get on a rig, you go, you say, oh, it's an odor of gas. Jules was riding with the battalion chief, Joseph Pfeiffer, videotaping. It was just another call. And 
I'm riding with the battalion chief. It was basically camera practice. See, Jules had only been shooting for a few weeks. Before that, Gideon was the main cameraman. Every time the battalion goes, I go. You know, I just need to practice, so I shoot. Uh, no, I don't stop. We checked the area with meters, and it, it was kind of routine. It was 8.46 in the morning. That's when this stopped even resembling a normal day. Right then and there, I knew that this was going to be the worst day of my life as a firefighter. Go, go to the trade center. Immediately, I knew this wasn't an, an accident. Oh, my God. Now look like a direct attack. Chief Pfeiffer made the first official report. We have a number of floors on fire. It looked like the plane was aiming towards the building. Transmit a third alarm. We'll have the staging area at Vesey and West Street. Yeah, it was probably a two-minute ride, but it seemed like it was forever because there was a lot of things going through your head. Everyone we was passing was looking up. It's like the world just stopped. We are just currently getting a look at the World Trade Center. We have something that has happened here. Flame and an awful lot of smoke from one of the towers. Whatever has occurred has just occurred uh, within uh, within minutes. And uh, we are trying to determine exactly what that is. Where are you? Are right in there? No, go right in front. As we swung around in front of World Trade, my mind tells me, wow. This is, this is bad. What do we do? Like, what do we do for this? We park right under the awning of One World Trade Center. Chief Pfeiffer puts his gear on, and I remember asking him, you know, Chief, can I come in with you? I want, I want to come in with you. And he says, yep. Yeah, you stay with me. Come in with me, never leave my side. I go in, and I hear screams. And right to my right, there was two people on fire, burning. I just didn't want to film that. It was like, no one, no one should see this. Pfeiffer was the first chief into the building. Right away, a guy from the Port Authority told him the damage was somewhere above the 78th floor. But all you had to do was look around. It was obvious something had happened right there in the lobby. You just, you just saw that all the windows were blown out. The lobby looked like the plane hit the lobby. Later, they figure out that flaming jet fuel had shot straight down the elevator shaft. All of this damage was done already. People was all over the place. So you knew it was going to be worse when we got upstairs. Planes are shooting out. Smoke is pouring out. I want you to get an engine and team up. Let's get an outside line. Walk to seven. Okay, I want you to go any higher than 70. What do you want to do? My main concern was we had you know, 20 floors of people above. And we had to figure out a way to get them out. As it turned out, we had no usable elevators. With the elevators out, there was only one way to get up there. Walk. Companies come in. You see them with a concerned look on their face. 
and their center. A firefighter in full gear, carrying 60-something pounds of hose and equipment, takes about a minute to climb one flight of stairs. These guys were looking at 80 stories just to get there. Then they'd start working. I felt the mood that we were going to put the fire out. Everyone seemed to be confident. I know I was. You basically looked at it and said, OK, we got 10, 20 stories of fire. <laughs> you know, we'll deal with it. We'll get up there. You know, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. Britain throws away millions of tons of rubbish every year. Now, 11 volunteers are going to live, sleep and eat on it. Can they cope living off the landfill? Dumped starts Sunday at 9 on 4. Enjoy a new double side protection every day. All Days is the first panty liner with two side protection zones. All Days at your best. What's this thing? I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the never-ending roll. New Andrex Longer Lasting. As tested by You Know Who. Your complete guide to the Rugby World Cup, from the first kick to the final whistle. Free in the Sunday Times. More is our triple promise on car insurance. One, with more than you can protect your maximum no claims bonus for the life of your policy. Meaning two, we won't raise your premium just because you make a claim. And three, we'll give you a 10% discount when you call, or even more online. Call 0800 300 800 or visit us at morethan.com for a 15% discount. Isn't it annoying that your cups and plasticware sometimes come out wet and you have to towel dry? Introducing new finish Turbo Dry for up to 100% drier results versus any detergent alone. New finish Turbo Dry for amazingly drier and shiny dishes straight out of the dishwasher. You'd never wash your dishes in a dirty sink, so why wash them in a dirty dishwasher? Grease and lime scale build up on the vital parts of your dishwasher. Finnish Dishwasher Cleaner dissolves them right down to the drain. And a cleaner dishwasher means cleaner dishes. Finnish Dishwasher Cleaner. The all-new Freelander 2, ready when you are. Oh, yeah, superb body. Yeah, very nice. No, no I mean, not that you, you've, you've obviously... Do you think I could buy a case? Oh, thank you very much. I wouldn't have... Uh, better make that a couple of cases. You're lucky everything I buy is interest-free for 10 months. I'll put these in the car. Bad, no, bad car. Bad car! Bad car! Ah, yes! No! What's the damage? 0% on purchases and balance transfers for 10 months with Barclay Card. Mm. Indulge your washing. You surf with essential oils. There are fire crews just screaming into this area from every conceivable direction. By this time, 
Some of the top chiefs in the department have joined Chief Pfeiffer, running the command post, sending guys upstairs. Every time I looked around, it was new faces. Some that I, uh, I, I recognized. I had seen Chief Pronti, great guy, white hair, mustache, the perfect grandfather that you'd like to have. I remember seeing uh, Lieutenant Fodi, who was uh, working with Nine Engine. Said hello and then started going up. Another of the men who went up was Lieutenant Kevin Pfeiffer. He was in charge of Engine 33. And he was the chief's brother. I just remember we both looked at each other, said a few words, and but it was more the look with a, a real concern that this was a, going to be something tough. It's going to be a tough job. It's going to be a long job. They'll put it out. That's what they do. The last time Jules had seen his brother was an hour ago at the firehouse. Far as Jules knew, Gideon had followed Tony, the probie, into the tower. When we had left for the order of gas in the street, engine. for me, it was in the engine. And then when we arrived to the Trade Center, he went up immediately with the guys. So for me, my brother is going up the stairs. It turns out, Gideon was with Tony. Engine 7, ladder 1. This is Firefighter Benetata. But Tony was still at the firehouse. Yeah. No, I was off duty. And now he'd been ordered to stay there. Everybody's been recalled. All available units must come back to the firehouse. While Tony tried to keep up with the phones, this is Firefighter Benetata. Gideon took his camera and started walking down towards the Trade Center. He was sure his brother was inside, and he wanted to get to him. I remember uh, slowly walking down to the World Trade Center. What really stick in my mind is passing by the people and filming them and filming their astonishment. And the eyes saying, this is not happening. I remember tilting the camera back and forth between the people and the tower in front of me. of the World Trade Center have been hit by aircraft. Both are in flames. There is uh, black smoke coming from both of the towers. Uh, it's uh, a horrific scene here. There's um, debris flying through the air. Right? Mayday. There were two planes. I saw the second one hit. It hit the other tower. What we knew was that a second plane hit. And we had a lot of people trapped. Stay together. Stay together. You know what's going on. We're just going to have to walk in. One way to go. Second plane is quick. One way to go. All right. Now the Chiefs would have to set up a whole other operation over in Tower 2. The second plane hit. That's when you could see fear. Both of them are on fire. You could see it in everybody's eye. Oh, 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 oh. 
All of your co-workers are with you. There were people from all over the world in these streets. Different colors, different languages. On those few blocks between the Far House and the Wall Trade Center, the entire world was there. There's two aircraft. Two aircraft. The first one on one World Trade Center. The second one just happened. And they were all looking at the same thing and talking about the same thing and reacting the same way. Do you see a plane going straight into the building? Right there, into the side. Yes, I'll bring the plane. That was a direct hit. That's a huge one. There were two planes. There's two. One of these buildings. Yeah, I saw the last one. We are boom in the whole field. What are those people going to do? On the second one? All, yeah. all the elevators are blocked out. Yeah. Well, the staircases must still be, yeah. right? The stairs were crowded. People were coming down burnt. Upstairs in Tower One, the guys from my firehouse were now 10 floors up and climbing. If we did talk, it was to the people coming down, trying to comfort them, tell them it's all right, get out, stay calm. I wound up finding a woman in the uh, C staircase. Her arms were all burnt. She was just sitting there, basically in shock. So I picked her up under her arms, and I put her in with a group of guys, and I asked the group of guys to you know, take it down. I knew we had to get up to help people. We had to get up there. People pretty much said, why are y'all going up there? Get out. Their concern was to get everybody out. That was the key. As much people out as possible. Most of the people in Tower One came out on the mezzanine above the lobby. Then they'd get out through another building. All right, I want to use the lobby of seven as a triad. The chiefs didn't want anyone going through the lobby doors. First, it was because debris was falling outside. Then, it was people falling. You don't see it, but you know where it is. What's that? And you know that every time you hear that crashing sound, it's, it's a life which is extinguished. It's not something you could get used to. And the sound was so loud. I just remember looking up, thinking, how bad is it up there that the better option is to jump? reports of a plane hijacking before these crashes we're telling you about at the World Trade Center towers this morning. Pieces of the building and the planes actually landed blocks away. Gideon was walking with his camera when he found a chunk of the plane engine that had crashed completely through Tower 2. Don't get stuff. Don't get it. This is evidence. No, you don't kick it. All right, all right, all right. just get out of here. Just go. This is evidence. You're kicking stuff. Come out of it. That was as close as Gideon would get to the Trade Center, without a firefighter anyway. Go, 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 move. So I decided that the smartest thing to do was to slowly walk back to the firehouse and find a way to go to Jules. We're just getting word now. One of the two planes was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. This is two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. We now have reports of a fire at the Pentagon. A fire at the Pentagon being reported this morning. Now, I was just saying that the officials are calling this a, an act of terrorism. They're saying that's clearly what it is. Clearly not an accident. Arriving back at the firehouse and. Tony is still alone, and he has no clue of what to do. The, Pan the Pentagon's fire? War. This is war. And just by 
listening to him, freaking out and swearing and, and behaving like I've never seen him behaving. Tony was expressing what we all felt. At that point, I saw the fireman in him taking over. I can't believe the Pentagon. Somebody has balls. I mean, a few times he was just pulling his gear and about to rush to the door, and realizing that he was the only one in charge of this empty firehouse. And going back to the house watch and looking again at those pictures on TV and just to make sure that it was real. Tony just wanted to go there. In the lobby, the chiefs were trying to run the largest rescue operation any of them had ever seen. With next to no information coming in from outside. You got a phone that's working? I think the entire world knew more than we did. Everybody had seen the attacks. Everybody had seen the tower burning. The New York avion s'est encastré dans une des deux. Had seen the Pentagon. For us, we didn't have a clue of what was going on outside our lobby. Just like a beehive, that place. Everybody's working on the phone, everybody's working on the radio. Everybody's getting information, sending guys up, getting reports. And just trying to get this thing under control. At one point, there was even a rumor. A third plane was heading in. You got to remember, at that moment, anything seemed possible. Other than NYPD, Port Authority, police, and the military. And I need that done now. Other than NYPD, On top of everything else, just talking to the guys in the stairwells was tough. Four David to Battalion 7. The tower's internal communication setup had been knocked out by the crash. That left fire department radio. Suddenly, you have hundreds and hundreds of firefighters that have radios. Seems to become more and more difficult. We had one guy from the WTC who was trying frantically to reach anyone on the elevators. 69 car, anyone in this car? Oh, is there anyone in this car? And going through the list. Hello, is there anyone in this car? And there's about 98 elevators in the World Trade Center. 70, 70 on the in the middle of all this, suddenly, an elevator opens up. And you see people not having a clue of what's going on. Because they've been stuck in there since the first plane hit. Are we seeing the look on the firefighters? I don't know. 
It was not fear, it was what's going on. Disbelief. That made me panic a little bit. That made me panic. It was the first time I had seen Father Judge, the chaplain, as he's called. He was in the lobby with us, and he, I could tell that he was praying. You know, Father Judd, he, he would at least make eye contact with you and kind of give you a reassuring look. That wasn't occurring, almost like he knew that this was not good. at the firehouse. What's up? What's up? Off-duty guys were starting to show up. You know, Paul, we're just waiting right now. What's that? We're just waiting right now. Tony was, uh, he just had one thing in his mind. This is bad. To go there, and he couldn't. Two fifth alarms right away. And, you and that's when Chief Burns arrived. I need a cup of coffee. Larry Burns joined the fire department in 1957, retired a battalion chief three years ago. I couldn't wait. I had to get down there. Because you know what? They're my firefighters. It's my building. It's my city. Leave your gear all together, get a flashlight and a bottle of water. OK. Told the probie, get your gear, let's go. I remember Tony asking me to bring him some gloves, Gee, medical grab gloves. A box of gloves. Go grab a box of gloves. And by the time I found them and rushed back, they were gone. The Proby and the retired chief were lost in the crowd, headed down to the Trade Center. I think at that point, the lobby was pretty empty. There were just a few of us in the lobby, and, and we were discussing tactics. This is Tower One. This is Tower One. Put a big one here. Some of the outlying companies didn't know what Tower 1 was and Tower 2. So we were just trying to help them out by writing it on the desk to make it obvious to, to people. It was just before 10 o'clock, a little over an hour since the first plane hit. Firefighters from all over the city were inside those towers, hundreds of them. You remember I'm filming Chief Pfeiffer? And he's on the radio. in Malaya. Comedian Jenny Eclair travels back to her birthplace. It's turned into a clinic. As she explores her legacy as a forces child in Britain's empire. You get this sort of residual guilt and you think, oh, it's not my, not, not my fault. Another chance to see Empire's children, Wednesday at 9 on More 4. Big night tomorrow. I don't know that I feel like it. It's bloated, you know, and constipated. Try this. New Senecot Dual Relief contains the only formulation that traditionally relieves both constipation and bloating. Baby. Try New Senecot Dual Relief Tablets, a natural choice for constipation and bloating. Got heartburn, indigestion? Now there's new Gaviscon Double Action, our best ever formulation to soothe the burning pain of heartburn and neutralize excess acid. Relief you can really feel. New Gaviscon double action. What a feeling. From behind, it looked like Peter. But yelling that nickname twice. I swear. I swear it looked like him. It 
is a very funny nickname, though. The, uh, receptionist seemed to think so. Auris, the new Toyota. You'll feel different inside. Isn't it annoying that your cups and plasticware sometimes come out wet and you have to towel dry? Introducing new finish Turbo Dry for up to 100% drier results versus any detergent alone. New finish Turbo Dry for amazingly drier and shiny dishes straight out of the dishwasher. You'd never wash your dishes in a dirty sink, so why wash them in a dirty dishwasher? Grease and lime scale build up on the vital parts of your dishwasher. Finnish Dishwasher Cleaner dissolves them right down to the drain. And a cleaner dishwasher means cleaner dishes. Finnish Dishwasher Cleaner. Love me tender, love me true, all my dreams fulfill. Through good times and not so good times, we have always supported the toughest breed of all, and the British farmer. Listen up, girls. This is called a dilemma. Okay, so you want to get home to get your fix of that TV show you're addicted to. But the guy with the green eyes just asked you out. So what do you do? It's easy. You do both. Boots are at it again. This month, they're cutting another 750 prices. And they're going to keep on cutting them. So even more of us can look and feel better for less. Why are you crying? Don't you know? On September 7th, don't miss the film critics are calling breathtaking. I saw him with my own eyes. Stunning. They gave me a choice. Prisoner will join the army. Epic and essential experience. I love you. From the director of Pride and Prejudice, Atonement. It's party time at Claridge's for the F Word season finale. Take the crowd! Hold the crowd! And the king of comedy is here. <laughs> I walked to the restaurant the other week carrying a stag. Who do you think you are? Four. <laughs> Gordon's lambs make a final appearance. Yeah. I thought the lamb was excellent. And the 18 stone idiot Johnny Vegas crashes the kitchen. Oh, God, the Ramsey parties. We all just sit loud telling each other. Another chance to see the F Word season finale Tuesday at 9 on More 4. A situation that uh, started bad just gets worse and worse and worse. The World Trade Center, South Tower, which was hit by a plane and racked by an explosion approximately an hour ago, has totally collapsed. What happened? If you're just joining us this morning, uh, here for a, a horrific surprise. one right out of one of the movies you would see in Hollywood, people walking around with uh, cell phones in tears, uh, holding their heads, looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center, and just shaking their heads in disbelief. Out on the street, everyone knew what just happened. The South Tower was gone. They saw it collapse and ran. waited. Time slowed down and everything became pitch black. Everybody all right? Yeah, I'm okay. How's the way out of here? And then realized, okay, um, I'm not dead. <laughs> yeah, right here. So let's uh, turn on my uh, floodlight on top of my camera. All right, come on down this way. Oh. Yeah, let's get out the way we came in. Everybody down. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on down. Everybody down. In 
inside the Trade Center, all Jules and Chief Pfeiffer knew, all anyone knew, was that something had gone terribly wrong. They asked me, you with the light, to help us out. We gotta get everybody out! was pointing my light wherever they needed. I remember seeing Chief Pfeiffer. Air Pulse, Tower 1. To all units, <laughs> evacuate the building. Command Pulse to all units. He gave it right away, very calm, didn't wait. And it was for him, it was a precaution. It was okay, something wrong is happening. Let's get everybody out. Where's that flashlight? From the tone of his voice, I knew that it was no normal thing. I knew it was time to leave. I remember saying to the guys, well, it's, uh, we're on our own now. And for the first time, I looked in someone else's eyes and saw fear, Whew. which you don't see with the firemen. We orderly evacuated. Well, it was such a long walk, 21, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. And I was going down the stairs. I could remember a fireman resting on the landing and uh, telling them, you know, we've heard of Mayday, get out of the building. And, uh, I don't think they, a lot of them, I know for a fact, did not take it serious. Sarge? Hey, Pete! Come on, Pete! I was not even consciously filming. I was just had my camera by my side and pointing the light wherever they needed. Sorry. Yeah. Needed my light to, uh, to, to actually help someone, and then I realized it was Father Judge. We saw him lying at the, the base of the escalator where we were. And I, I removed his white collar and I opened up his shirt. And I remember checking for his pulse and realizing at that time uh, um, he was gone. All right, we got four guys. Yeah, I got Top of the escalator. Right? Top of the escalator. Top of the escalator. After that, we had to figure out how to get out of where we were. If you go out this way, uh, right where we are now, people are still jumping, debris still falling, and it's too dangerous. You cannot go out this way. At the World Trade Center, we took uh, a hit on that last explosion. Which way? Chief Pfeiffer tells the people carrying Father Judge, OK, stay here. Which way? I told him that I'll be back and wait here, and I'll see if the bridge is, is still here. Chief Pfeiffer went to check one of the footbridges leading out of the Trade Center. If it was still standing, it'd be their best way out. And now I wonder for the first time if, uh, if Julie is still alive. I never thought about it uh, before. Honey, it's a terrible, terrible day. I'm sure they're happy. I realized that Jules could be dead at that very moment. And I was feeling so responsible. I was the one who uh, put him in this situation. I had to find Jules. Gideon 
hitched a ride with three off-duty firemen. Determined to get to the Trade Center the only way they could, in a pickup truck. You shouldn't have even come in here, man. Division one. <laughs> we walk and we walk and we walk. And... There are Maydays being given, and we start to figure out okay, it's much be worse than we think because you cannot have that many Maydays and all that dust and that noise. when I felt the danger for the first time. It was all around you. I mean, every single cell of your body was telling you, you know, you should not be here. The scenery was radically different. I mean, it was this white powder everywhere. Just a few people here and there. Take yourself as mask. Get masked, we get an extra cylinder, and I'm gonna go in. Right, and this kind of silence. Okay. You have ambulances straight down. Thank of you. course, Thank uh, you. there's no word on casualties. You have ambulances straight down. But suffice to say, the uh, loss of life, uh, presumably profound. Ambulance straight down. Down. Of course, at this point, everyone's concern is just getting north, getting away from the World Trade Center, as well as finding out where their families are. The south tower of the World Trade Center just minutes ago collapsed to the ground. Only one tower is standing at this point. I have a direct line of sight to what is left of the World Trade Center. The fire continues to burn. I can see the flames through the thick smoke. By this time, Chief Pfeiffer had found a safe exit <coughs> and tried to radio the men in the lobby. No answer. So we walked across the bridge back towards the Trade Center. I'm still trying to call on the radio and not getting through. The guys that we had left there, they're not there anymore. They had already gone out another way, carrying the body of Father Michael Judge down the street to St. Peter's Church. They laid his body on the altar. Father Mike's death certificate is number 00001, the first official casualty of the attacks. The chief, his aide, Eddie Fahey, and Jules walked outside, underneath the footbridge they just crossed, and into a scene that none of them could even comprehend. And there's debris everywhere. There's dust covering the entire place. And we look, and the tower's here. So we say, OK. Probably it was something else. The tower is nice. It's standing. The other one, we can't see it, but it's probably just, you know, on the other side. And no one tells us. We have no clue. So we walk north, just trying to figure out what took place here, and then try to gain some control. And then was it just a, a sense that this wasn't a good place to stay? Chief Pfeiffer's priority was to set up a new command post and find his men. Right now, they were coming down the stairs. At some point, I started to run. 
I don't know, even know if I was touching stairs on my way down. When I got about to three or two is when I started to think of my family, you know. So I gotta get out of here. When we reached the lobby, I, I joked about it. I said uh, the command post was abandoned. The board was set up and nobody was there. I said, oh, this is not a good sign. <laughs> I knew there was nothing I could really do. I mean, I was not a fireman. I had absolutely no medical expertise at all. Um, I was just a civilian. But as a cameraman, yeah, there was something I could do. And it was to document what was happening. So the cameraman took over and just filmed. Gideon had made his way as close to the tower as he could. Strange enough, the only thing that was that was my preoccupation was to 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 clean my lens. Jules was with Chief Pfeiffer who was plotting his next move. The firefighters from my house had reached the lobby and scattered. You know, kind of walking at this point. We knew we were out of the building, felt we were safe. Unfortunately, there were people jumping out of windows. You could see them hitting the ground or around you, debris hitting the ground. Get yourself a counting ball with Chief Corey down at staging. Let's move. Come on, officers. Basically, Everybody was standing right in the shadow of Tower One. It was 10.28 in the morning. And this huge roar. And I don't even have time to think at that point. I just, I just run. Then I, I feel someone jumping on top of me, and then the dust. I realized that I was going to die. We need help! And the only thing I could think about to the truth, and I remember telling myself that if I would survive that, I would, uh, I would be a, a better brother. Let's go before the car blew up! And it's dead silence. It's nothing. No radio calls, no, no sound, nothing. <laughs> and I feel the person who was on top of me get up. And I recognize it's Chief Pfeiffer's voice. And I just realized it's just, you know, it jumped on top of me to protect me from all this. <laughs> Chief Pfeiffer said, okay, let's go now. And we get up. The dust starts to clear because the wind was blowing in the opposite direction. After that, it was 
just trying to literally walk around the block and, and regroup and walk back to the scene and, and see what we could do. Some water, something to drink. Thanks. Open your mouth. Open your mouth, because I need the water too. Yeah. I had been in this street three times in the last hour. The first time it was full of people. The second time everybody was running away from it. The third time, getting out of the last collapse, there was just nobody. And everything was white. Everything was covered by the dust. Holy shit. It was the most surreal scene I have ever seen. I cannot describe what took place. It is a, a scene just not to be believed. The smoke's still billowing. What we do have uh, is a lockdown. You can't get in, you can't get out, you can't go up, you can't go down. I see that I'm still in the middle of the street, uh, and I see there is a little deli. It seems to be open in the corner. Yeah, we're getting out too now. A lot of people injured. <laughs> Firefighters, bloody nose, things like that. <coughs> and then it hits me. But now, where is my brother? I start realizing that I've probably lost my brother. So I try to go back to the World Trade Center. I need to go find my brother. Where are the guys? I have no idea. Where's we cheap fly from? And I'm in the middle of the street walking, and a cop approached me and says, you know, who are you with? Who is the chief of uh, Battalion 1? Oh, your Battalion 1? Yes. You got an ID? Yeah, I have my letter of, uh, oh, from take, the commissioner. Uh, take your letter and your camera the and camera. get out of here. Thank you. All right? Go. So I go back up, walk north, not really knowing where I'm going. Police department? No, they're making a documentary on, on the fire department. Come on, this ain't... Disneyland, let's go. And after a while, I said, you know, there's nothing I can do here. I need to, I need to go back to the firehouse. Maybe they'll have some news, and no. maybe, maybe he's already back there. But at that point, I just, I think he's dead. And it becomes, it becomes too overwhelming. Walking back to the firehouse and not trying to think for one second about troops. That was too much. Don't hurry, honey. We're okay. family. Everyone's asking me what happened, what happened? I said, I I said, hell, hell is what happened. It, it just came down, and it, it wasn't supposed to come down.
It's not easy being a survivor. Little to little, the guys started to come back, one by one. I can't explain why I'm here and there's so many dead. Very emotional. A lot of guys are crying. So many thoughts and emotions and... We locked, we, uh, the way we locked out, we were in one. Two fell first and then they told us to get out. Two fell first? Two fell first. Yeah, two I can't figure this out. One didn't fall first. That's why they were getting us out. We got to call our loved ones, tell them we were okay. We were sick. But we just got out. We just got out. I got up two blocks, and I'm like, I'm still not far enough. I got to come with this thing. Like that. So, you know, you just needed to be with, right, with the guys, you know? I couldn't get back in. Don't put me up. I was never so glad to see firemen in my life. It was a, it was a, it was a great thing to, to know that, uh, that uh, people were surviving this. I thought you guys were dead. Not the only one. I thought I was dead. <laughs> That was the scariest thing when I came out. It's like, oh my God, am I glad to see you? We were, uh, we were the lucky ones. I don't think it's luck. I mean, it's a miracle that we're here. Miracle isn't a word you hear much from firefighters, especially not on that day. But what else could you call it? One guy after another was making it back safe. Down here looking. I got thrown into two ambulances. We both we ran. I, I can't believe we all made it out. How did we make it out of that building? 30 seconds. Another two flights higher. Again, the cameraman would just film them coming back and asking them if they had seen Jules. And nobody could answer this question. It was extremely uh, frustrating and annoying. One guy from the firehouse came to me and I asked him, you know, have, have you seen Jules? I mean, do you know where he is? And he looked at me and he said, yes, he's behind you. And I turn over and Jules was there in the firehouse. I didn't even see him coming in. And it was like meeting for the first time. I ask Jules if he's all right. He tells me yes. He tells me that he was all that time in the lobby. I tell him, I know now what it's like to think you're going to die. And then, and then I tell him, I got the first plane and I filmed and do you have enough tape? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, close? Under. Yeah, okay, good. All right, we're good here. All right. And it definitely was a miracle, you know? Oh, man. You don't know what happened to you guys. Oh, God. Everybody's all right. Everybody's accounted yeah. for. Right here. You got everybody? Right here. Everybody's accounted for. Everybody come back one by one in the firehouse. Except one. Did you see Tony over there, Ben Tony. Yeah, that's what I heard. Here we were, all accounted for, except for Tony. Everybody was wondering about Tony. doing? Dairy free, fat free, gluten free. How do you know which free is right for you? With free UK evening and weekend calls for a year from BT, the choice is simple. Yeah, no, Adam's great. Call 0800 22 2299.
Your complete guide to the Rugby World Cup, from the first kick to the final whistle. Free in the Sunday Times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The ladybugs came to the ladybugs picnic. The MFI half price sale has been extended. There's three years interest free credit and nothing to pay for the first year. Hurry, it's the final weekend. At Sainsbury's until Sunday, there's a fantastic offer on all wines. So there's never been a better time to try something new. You'll save 25% when you buy any six bottles or more, including champagne. And that's on top of any existing offers. Sainsbury's. Try something new today. Tropicana Pure Premium only comes straight from the very best fruit. And our oranges are squeezed within 24 hours of picking. Tropicana Pure Premium. Straight from the fruit. So, what's the deal with phone calls? Well, you can call anyone at any time in the UK for free. Oh. Plus, your monthly phone line rental, completely free. Really? All with Tiskly Broadback. Tiskly? Yeah. Tiskly's best ever broadband and phone offer. Let's hope we get the same deal in 10 years' time. For free phone line rental and free unlimited UK phone calls with Tiskly Broadband, call 0800 107 9000. I spent three years running. This is where it ends. The Born Ultimatum. Agile, yet tough, and officially the safest car for adults ever tested by Euro NCAP. Introducing the all-new Nissan Qashqai, the hatchback redefined. More is our triple promise on car insurance. One, with more than you can protect your maximum no claims bonus for the life of your policy. Meaning two, we won't raise your premium just because you make a claim. And three, we'll give you a 10% discount when you call, or even more online. Call 0800 300 800 or visit us at morethan.com for a 15% discount. I just almost kissed Matt. He was about to kiss me. No kidding, I want to meet him. I don't have any friends. I can kiss you all over the face right now. Don't flirt with me, Rick. The show must go on. Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, Thursdays at 10 on More 4. There is not anything recognizable of what were the two trade towers, nothing standing out from those clouds of dust at this time. You guys were in the building? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that day. That day changed everything. I think I got fibers in there. You got fibers in there. When I came back that day to the firehouse, one firefighter came to me and he said, you know, yesterday you had one brother. Today you have 50.
It's hard to even describe the emotions in the firehouse that day. And it was just like, you heard the ground rumble, and it was just, the green was just chasing you. We were running, hauling ass. I mean, on one hand, you're celebrating. Very frightful day, man. Very happy to be here. Somehow, the guys from our house, they got out. <laughs> we lost so much that in that two-hour period. How you doing, all right? And we felt like we got the hell kicked out of us. Shot, I don't know what to do, man. Go back down there or what? Shot. At the same time, we knew hundreds of firefighters, thousands of people had to have died in those towers. <laughs> and every hour that passed, we were more certain Tony Benetados was one of them. Hey, guys, uh, Deputy Chief Hill called. First Division, he doesn't want anybody else down here right now. Everybody was wondering about Tony. James just put his gear and went by himself to look for Tony. I'd come in from home, and yeah, we were ordered to stay at the firehouse. But the truth is, the guys had to go back, had to start digging for survivors. Mentality, get in there, get in there, get in there, get the people out. It's bred in you, it's programmed into you. I had to go back. And find the kid. It's gone, man. Seventeen down. I got down there just as Seven World Trade finally collapsed. Hey, Rick, been going live with you the whole no sign of Tony anywhere. It had to be almost six o'clock. Nine hours after everything started, hey, that Tony just walked in. I walked in like a daze, and they were all like, hey, it's Benetados, you're all right. What's wrong with your hand, anything? No. No? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Chill out. How are you doing? You OK? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened on your end? Uh, I was in the building. Were you? Is everyone from the house? Everyone? everyone? And I just asked, did everyone get back? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> that felt pretty good. And I was so sure you dudes were dead. <laughs> digging through shit. And you <laughs> chilling here eating oranges. And I'm roaming around looking for you. The last one that went out there came back, and we were all OK. I left here uh, right after the first collapse. Turns out, Tony had been with Larry Burns the whole time, the proby and the retired chief. They were right there when Tower One came down. I checked all the rigs. There were rigs crushed, paramedic trucks covered with rubble, flipped. Fires burning everywhere, huge fires. That whole day, I just searched through rubble, lifting things up, checking underneath. It was hard for him, just very hard for him. He's only been a firefighter for, you know, a couple of months. But he proved himself that day to all the guys, you know. so much that we didn't know about that first day. Who had attacked us, how, why. All we knew is that nothing would ever be the same. And then, of course, the, the images of the replay that never stops of the planes hitting, the towers coming down. And it was like, OK, enough TV. Thankfully, the, uh, the power went out about that time, so it was, it was a relief. 
maybe in the uh, courtyard. And uh, then we'll hook the lights into it. I got two more sets of lights coming. The entire downtown Manhattan lose power. It was really this feeling that we're going to be there for a long time. Just a short while ago, Mayor Giuliani held a news conference saying it's important not to lash out in anger because of the attacks on the World Trade Center. Most of us stayed at the firehouse that night, trying to take it all in. The roof of the Marriott, we were on the roof of the Marriott. There was parts all over the place, legs, feet. It was nasty. You all right, brother? Yeah, I'm all right. One of the things that sticks with me more than everything I saw is I sat down to, next to Ted. He looked real bad. To Tony, man, it, it was it was raining bodies. I just the way he said it, man. It just the man had been through hell. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. It's a very depressed, dismal, miserable mood. Hundreds of firemen, thousands of civilians are gone. As much, as quickly as you blow out a match, you're gone. Flip a switch, you're gone. That's it. Just buildings came down. Gone. See them. It's hard to believe they're not there. They're not there. This was my first reaction. They're gone. There is no more World Trade Center. No. It did happen, right? It's not something that I'm going to close my eyes and, and open them again and, and I'm going to see the tower, right? It's not there. You know, and, and the only thing you have really, and, you, and, you know, and the only thing that really kept it all together was us as a group, as a body, as a firehouse. Around midnight, we sent Tony up to lower the flag to half-mast again. There's going to be a lot of pain to deal with in the future. I have a pretty good friend who well, was in my uh, academy class in my squad who was among the missing. A lot of guys, we all lost friends and family. I don't want to ever have to put that thing at half mast again for the rest of my career. That's it. Until the recall ends, it's 24 on, 24 off, 24 on, 24 off. We got word that we'd start digging in the morning. Some of the guys with wives and kids went home just for a few hours. They knew it might be days before they'd see their families again. My son was sleeping. I picked him up and I put him in my bed and I wanted, I wanted him to be with me. And normally I would take him out of my bed and put him in his own bed, but this night was the opposite. He didn't mind that. He, he actually had a big smile on his face and it was wonderful to see that smile again. Uh, probably the best, best entrance I ever made to a place. And the kids came out and we just kind of all cried in one big hug. And uh, it was a, uh, we, we just, we just cried. Oh, I got 
food athletes right here. Get a couple more guys down here. We'll set up a little line. Hey, you want to climb up there? Keep the three and a half in the middle so we can... Came back to the firehouse the next day. I couldn't wait to get back, actually, because I wanted to get down there. I figured, well, we're going to have plenty of people to, that are going to be trapped, for sure. We're going to get them out. We have to, we always do. I don't know if anyone's really pulled themselves together. Focus on what you're doing today. I mean, time enough in a couple of weeks to, to really take in what happened to our, to our guys. But today, you must focus on what you're doing. Going teams of two. One guy falls through a hole, you're gonna have a guy there who knows you fell in that hole. I'm gonna take a ride with you. We're all alive. That's, that's more than, than we could have possibly hoped for. So our job now is to go and do whatever needs to be done and do it as much and as hard as we can for as long as they'll let us. Some of the guys took a city bus down to what the media was already calling ground zero. You guys got extra uh, surgical gloves. You guys didn't put them in your pockets. Some firemen called it the pile. For us, it was still the trade center, even if it was gone. Hey, guys, if you hear three horns, that means something might be coming down. So keep your eyes open when you're walking around down there. I just realized something that I always wanted to deny is how evil, evil can be. Normal IQ is 100. He's got an IQ of 170. <laughs> Do I really want to be marked as gifted for the rest of my life? I might just be the only human being in a sea of robots, for what I know. It can be a curse. Another chance to see the Landmark series following 10 exceptional kids into adulthood. Child Genius, Sunday at 10 on More 4. eliminates odors and leaves your fabrics fresh. A speed bump. Uh, um, a beached whale. A doormat. Um, a mattress. Um, a brick. Uh, mermaid. What's he doing? 
doing? Driftwood. Oh, come on, give us a clue. Febreze eliminates odours and leaves carpets fresh. It's this easy to record your favourite TV series. It's this easy to record your favourite TV series. It's this easy to record your favorite. Photos, now 4P at Boots. MoneySupermarket.com is the UK's number one financial price comparison site. We help people get their best car insurance deal by comparing more quotes than anyone else. That's the car insurance sorted. What's next? Whatever you're looking for, MoneySupermarket.com compares the market in seconds to get you the best deal. MoneySupermarket.com, the price comparison site. Born is back in one of the best action thrillers ever made. This is where it ends. The Born Ultimatum. I want an immediate lift. For me, nothing beats Revitalift. L'Oreal Revitalift Double Lifting. One, a tautening gel with Protensium. Two, an anti-wrinkle cream with Pro-Retinol A. It immediately tautens skin and reduces the appearance of wrinkles. Revitalift Double Lifting. And now, step into the future of eye care with new Revitalift Double Lifting Eye. It reduces the appearance of wrinkles and immediately tautens the skin of the upper eyelids. New Revitalift Double Lifting Eye from L'Oreal Revitalift. For an eye-opening new look. So, from the quarterly figures, we see that the more I see you, the more I want you. If you've only got one thing on your mind before lunch, you should try new Special K Sustain. Just girls and girls. Delicious new Special K Sustain contains extra protein and fiber. See if it can keep you satisfied for longer. New Special K Sustain. It's called special for a reason. Down here and formed up companies, five men and, a, and an officer. We went to work right away, trying to look for survivors. Try get some buckets back here. Guys were digging fast, passing those buckets quick, digging frantically. Bucket, bucket. Hey, watch your back, guys. We'd be digging, and, and all of a sudden, everybody would say, quiet. And the whole place would get quiet, and people would look. And then slowly they would go back to work and, and start again. And that was, that's how things went down there. I remember the first time I went there, it was like, you know, gateway to hell. Technically, Jules and Gideon shouldn't have been anywhere near that site. It was dangerous enough for us firefighters. Every step you took, you could fall 30, 40 feet into a void. Jules and Gideon said they had to be there, but not to film. We would only take the camera and film for a few minutes. In fact, we forced ourselves to take the camera down because we just wanted to go there and, and help. 
We'd clear what we could by hand. And the iron workers would come in, cut the steel beams, and lift them out. Then we'd just start digging again. You have two 110-story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. How are we supposed to find anybody in this that there's nothing left of the building? You find a little spot, and you just keep going and digging and digging and trying to find something. And you find a foot, and then they say the building's going to collapse, and you run away. Go, go, go! And then we would go back and mostly just dug. We found, we found a body. It was a girl. She was dead. She was, she was definitely dead. All her clothes had been burned off her. She looked to be pregnant. Some people thought maybe she was just bloated, but I don't think so. She was, she was encased in rubble. And we had her about halfway uncovered. We had getting the body bag ready, and then they told us to run. And we ran. I never got to see if they got her out. What would have felt good getting, saying, all right, at least I got one person out. One family will be able to have a decent funeral. Our first shift was 24 hours. And in all that time, there was one person pulled out alive. One. It was beyond discouraging. It was even hard to understand. It was weird in a way. Walking back to the firehouse, People were cheering us, but we sure didn't feel like heroes. Every day, total strangers were showing up with supplies. Somebody said that if you could still use towels, so okay. that's the end of the towels. Thank you very much. Okay. They opened up the doors, and lo and behold, uh, deliveries were coming by the ton. Kitchen? Or just go right around the corner, just dump them on the floor. You can't eat all the cookies they're giving you. <laughs> I, I know it's early in the operation here, but I just want to thank everyone for all the hard work that they've been doing. How we're here, only God knows. But again, guys, thank you so much. I really you have no idea. I love Check the lockers, bro. Check the lockers, all the lockers. Take whatever. It's something special. You know, when guys are relentless and just calling back and forth, guys with nails in their, in their hand, taping it up, gashes, blood everywhere, just taping it up and saying, let's go back, let's see what we can do to make this situation a little better. There's got to be people down there still alive. There has to be. Listen, we try to keep hope. And we look 
everywhere. We even crawled down into the stores and the subway tunnels underneath the site. But as days turned into weeks, you began to accept. There just wasn't anybody to find. But we never stopped looking. Hey, Chief. Yes, sir. We had another body over here. Firemen deal with ugly things every day. It's part of the job. But this was worse. Get up that body bag. Day after day, it pushed guys to their limit, maybe past it. A lot of guys don't know if they're going to do the job anymore. I know it's either this or the Army now. And I like saving lives. I don't like taking them. But after what I saw, if, they, if my country decides to send me to go kill, I'll do it now. Every night around dinner time, the fire department would put out a list of firefighters confirmed dead. And every night, that list got longer. It is with regret that the department announces the death of the following members. Battalion Chief John P. Williamson. Firefighter William Henry. Firefighter Eric T. Allen. Firefighter Manuel Mojica. Firefighter Lawrence J. Virgilio. Firefighter Timothy Haskell. Firefighter Thomas P. Hannafin. Firefighter John A. Ventura. Firefighter John We've lost so many people that everybody has lost dear friends, and not just one or two, but, but dozens. Most days, there was a memorial service for some guy you knew. Some days, two or three. Some days, four. One of those services was for Kevin Pfeiffer, the chief's brother. He was last seen in the stairs of Tower One, directing guys to the fastest way out of the building. I, I would say that Chief Pfeiffer's brother saved my life. Saved a lot of lives. And I remember uh, walking down West Street and just remembering saying, uh, you know, how much my brother and I used to love being downtown and, uh, and doing this job. And, um, and, um, and how now I didn't love it anymore. A few weeks passed, and we got new rigs. Well, used rigs, to replace engine seven and ladder one. They're still buried in there somewhere, under the pile. Eventually, we started going on runs again. Feels good, though. Playing pranks again and trying our best to love the job again. But things will never be the way they were.
every now and then still wonder, is it, is it really true, you know? I know it happened, but I don't know. How, how, how do you deal with something like this? It's the 11th every day for me when I wake up. Should they, do you want the new tape? As for Jules and Gideon, it's strange how things work out. In the beginning, they came to me and they said, let's make a documentary about a boy becoming a man during his nine-month probationary period. Turns out Tony became a man in about nine hours, trying to help out on 9-11. You know how you can tell that? He's not bragging about it. We said to Phil, we were the only ones on the ticket, and it said to Phil 1075. Do I feel like it's given me more of a sense of self-worth? Yes. Has it made me a man? No. What's a man? You know, I'll still watch cartoons and do my stupid things. I'm just a person who tries to do good, just like every other person in the fire department. For the fire department, now it's about rebuilding, somehow. At our firehouse, we've already got new probies to break in. You get one chance to make a first impression. Two guys fresh out of the academy. It's strange to think they'll never know what it was like to be a New York City fireman before September 11th. and they'll never really understand what we lost that day. All we can do is tell them the stories and show them the tape. American tradition. But here's my first question. Do you think it's a little dangerous hanging out guns in a bank? Those are his bullet holes. That's where the Kmart bullets went in. The True Story season continues with the film that made a difference. Michael Moore's Incendiary Bowling for Columbine. Tuesday at 10 on More 4. The MFI half-price sale has been extended. There's three years interest-free credit and nothing to pay for the first year. Hurry, it's the final weekend. Boots are at it again. This month, they're cutting another 750 prices. And they're going to keep on cutting them. So even more of us can look and feel better for less. Experience the power of stealth. Gillette Fusion Power Stealth. Fusion Power is so advanced and you barely feel the blades. Turn it on. Soothing micropulses help you reduce friction and increase razor glide. Feel the difference for yourself. The comfort of five blades plus the precision of one. Gillette Fusion Power Stealth. Think it's just wrinkles that age you. Over time, the skin structure weakens and skin contours become less defined. New Collagen Skin Remodeler, L'Oreal's first redefining moisturizer for the face and neck. Captured in an airtight pump, the patented formula with Pro Collagen plumps up the skin and helps define skin contours. Skin looks plumped up, smoother and younger. New Collagen Skin Remodeler Moisturizer from L'Oreal Paris.
At WH Smith, up to 75% off whatever you need for back to school. Don't forget the verbatim one gigabyte memory stick for under £9. Look up this Collins Dictionary for 74p. Or this Canon Printer Scanner Copier. Half price at 37 49 And remember, no copying. Back to school. Think WH Smith. Christian Lacroix. His fashion stir the imagination. His fragrances awaken the senses. Introducing Rouge for her. Noir for him. Two new fragrances from Christian Lacroix. Exclusively for Avon. From the Avon representative or online. the tools for school at Staples. Like this new HP Pavilion laptop with AMD dual-core processor and all-in-one printer for only 439.99. Now at Staples. New Fruzy, a frozen snack made with whole grain cereals. Yogurt. And real fruit pieces. The Fruzy range contains 110 calories or less per pot. And half the recommended daily amount of vitamin C. Simply delicious. Fruzy, a new range of frozen snacks from Walls. Find it in the freezer. FBI agent Robert Hansen's ordinary life hid an extraordinary secret. He started spying for the Russians in 1985. He's a traitor, Eric. Director Watson caught in the act. What if he's smarter than I am? He's smarter than all of us. Inspired by the true story of the greatest security breach in U.S. history. I am either insanely brave or quite insane. Breach. I think about it every day, every day. When my head hits the pillow at night, it's 9-11. I see a beautiful blue sky, it's 9-11. I see a low flying plane, it's 9-11. Captain Dennis Tardio, revered by his men for his leadership on 9-11, would retire just six months later. The last fire that I fought, people are outside and they're saying, everybody's out, everybody's out. And I find myself inside the room on fire, searching. Everybody's out, why am I in here? There's no, you know, I felt I'm taking an unnecessary risk right now. And uh, if I jeopardize my own life, that's one thing. But if I'm, if I'm taking risks, and I'm subjecting the other firefighters to those unnecessary risks. I'm not doing my job. And I think it was at that moment I realized that it's time to, uh, it's time to retire. I uh, basically needed to be away from the job. And Tony, the former probie of Ladder One, would also find his life going in a different direction after 9-11 rising to the new challenges of the FDNY. I figured if another incident happened, I wanted to make sure that I was there and then I would be able to do something. A couple months after the Trade Center, I made my way over to Hazmat One. Hazmat One is the fire department's at then only real response for nuclear, biological, chemical, and industrial hazmat incidents. They prepare us for any type of terrorist incident that you could possibly come across. Tony's doing very well. I had met him a couple days after 9-11. Uh, he says, you know, Chief, I would like to go to hazmat and become a hazmatician. I says, Tony, you got to become a fireman first. After you become a fireman, we'll put you any way you want. So he did his time. He's now one of the best hazmat folks we have out there. Chief Pfeiffer, promoted twice since 9-11, now heads up the FDNY's counterterrorism and emergency preparedness unit. I've looked and examined the, the whole response to the Trade Center. I wish we would have seen 
I overheard what everyone saw on TV. We didn't get any messages that the uh, top 15 floors were glowing red or that the building looks like it was going to collapse. So what I do now is to make sure that we receive information, that there is a unified command, that, that information is readily exchanged for all first responders and to better coordinate a rescue effort. All bridges south of 130 Street are not to be used by anyone. I guess people would think after five years, well, that's behind us all. It's not. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. One, it creates a sense of urgency to, to change, to, for the department to change. What normally would have taken decades to accomplish, we were able to accomplish in less than five years. It also keeps the memories of the people we love alive. Um, when you do feel some pain, that means they're still there with you, at least in your heart. I can see that what he's doing, he's doing it for his brother. That, you know, his life has taken a, a higher purpose. There is a sadness that I can always feel is, you know, buried below the surface. Five years later, at the World Trade Center, there is still no building to replace it. No memorial to remember those who died there. Just a lot of politics and an empty hole in the ground. Five years later, we still don't have a memorial. Five years later, at that holy ground, there's still a hole in the ground. The fire department built their own memorial to honor those who never came home on September 11th. There is a permanent place for them just in the shadow of Ground Zero. A bronze wall with the names of all 343 firefighters who died that day. With this memorial, we will ensure that their memory is kept alive. They will be known as firefighter Michael Boyle, firefighter John Vigiano, Lieutenant Kevin Dowdell, Captain Patrick Brown, Chief Peter Gancy. They deserve that recognition, and we made sure that they got it. We have a beautiful mural there at 10 and 10, which was our ground zero. So we fulfilled our promise. Guys are coming down with cancer, and you know, are you going to be 344, 345, 346? That day, the, the dust was so thick that you couldn't see the hand in front of your face, that you barely could breathe. So I wonder what's the store for me and what's in store for the other firefighters. From the start, rescue workers at Ground Zero were assured by authorities that the air was safe. But despite what authorities said, it appeared to be different. Almost immediately after that, I started having severe chest pains. I would say it's definitely related to that. I've heard a lot of things what happened to other guys, you know, getting asthma and all of that. I know, I know our, our folders are stamped WTC. I have a, a chronic bronchitis. Um, I had a persistent cough. If I sneeze, I'll sneeze up black. So I wonder what it's done to me. If you read the papers every day, they keep a running count of what's going on, and you can see that guys are getting ill. Unless it is the most extraordinary of all coincidence, they are all sick. There's something out there cooking in all of us, and I fear for what 10 years are going to bring us. All the health issues that they talk about, I really don't want to hear about it because I know somewhere down the line I might come down with something. If it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen. So I don't even worry about it. I turn the page whenever I see something about 9-11. The Trade Center changed me. I, I know it did. But so does everything. I don't think it's the severity of an event that changes who you are. I think it's how you interpret it. When I was 13, 
I had a sister who took her own life through fire. And I witnessed everything. And those images plagued me for quite a while afterwards. When the Trade Center happened, I was not gonna wallow in sorrow or think about the losses that had happened in my life because what point is there in that? I focused on the positive things. These days, Lieutenant Bill Walsh finds peace, spending time with his granddaughter, Junebug. Being four years old when this 9-11 incident happened was, uh, she was, uh, she was my therapy. She was a, a, a person that I could go to and play simple games. Uh, I could help her with her schoolwork and I could just remove myself from the average stress that occurs after a traumatic event like 9-11. It's, it's not how much money that I have to earn in life, not the rank that I have to attain. It's, it's just appreciating family a little bit more, and uh, that's, that's the major way that I've changed since 9-11, I think. John O'Neill retired a year after 9-11 and moved to an island down south. Coming into New York on the plane the other day, not seeing the towers, that was the first time I've flown since uh, before 9-11, and not seeing the towers there left me with kind of an empty feeling. I like to think that I treat myself a little better now. I think uh, I appreciate things more. The birth of my son pretty much got me through it all. I, I was very big. My first son, so now I have a little me running around, somebody that I can pass the torch to somewhere down the line. So that, that was pretty important. After five years, I, I don't feel it, it gets easier, at least not for me. I don't know how everybody else feels. But for me, it, it's just a uh, day by day, one day at a time. I believe in living from day to day, look at the big picture, and deal with the problems as they come on a daily basis. Uh, I bought a new house out on Long Island. We moved, moved in a, into a town where five of my children live. So I'm surrounded by my children and grandchildren, and I'm very happy at that. Two fish. As for Jules, Gideon, and myself, life moved on. We went back to making documentaries. And when Jules got married, well, there was only one place for this to happen. I got married in the firehouse. That was, that was significant and it was beautiful because, you know, that, that firehouse that for so long after that event was, had become a symbol of sorrow and death and destruction. Suddenly one day it was turned into the celebration of love. They were just white everywhere and flowers and, and laughter and that was very special. And for the men of Engine 7 and Ladder 1, they will always remember the day that changed their lives forever. I would like people to remember that day just knowing that there was a lot of heroes that day, not even just the FDNY. I'm not talking about the FDNY, I'm talking about people in general, civilians in general. The legacy of the Trade Center should be life and humanity. It was a terrible day, certainly for the city, for the nation, for the world, particularly for the fire department. Um, uh, but I was never more proud to be a firefighter than 9-11. 9-11 to me, I, I will always remember as a proud day. Proud day for Engine 7 and, and its members. Uh, for the entire FDNY, it was, it, 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 it was uh, our saddest but our finest moment. 
it was a day where um, ordinary firefighters and rescuers um, during a, a very extraordinary time worked very hard and under the most difficult circumstances to help their fellow human beings. There's nothing more impressive than, than actually witnessing that happen.
You can find out more about how terrorism has affected people's lives and why people have felt they had to become a terrorist on our 9-11 site at channel4.com slash health. The closers next. Channel 4 is launching a new Plus One service. So you can find the same channel you know and love just one hour later. How's that for convenience? <laughs> Missed your favourite show? Catch it an hour later on Channel 4 Plus One. Now available on Freeview, Sky and Virgin Media. Sorry, what the... Bjorn? <laughs> Thank you. Please. I got it. I'm first. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I need cornflakes. This way. At Tesco, we understand that you want to get your shopping done as quickly as possible. So if there's ever more than one person in front of you at the checkout, we'll do our best to open another one. Let me open this other till for you, sir. One in front at Tesco. Every little helps. Get out of here, man. New Fruzy, a frozen snack made with whole grain cereals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yogurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And real fruit pieces. The Fruzy range contains 110 calories or less per pot. And half the recommended daily amount of vitamin C. Simply delicious. Fruzy, a new range of frozen snacks from Walls. Find it in the freezer. 60 minus 6, 54 minus 6, 48. Paper, rock, scissors. Give your brain a daily workout with new more brain training only on Nintendo DS. Here we go. Start again. Migraine is not just a headache. A chemical imbalance in the brain induces headache, nausea and sensitivity to light and sound. Immigrant recovery is the only treatment that tackles both the symptoms and the root cause of the migraine itself, helping to restore the chemical imbalance back to normal. Immigrant recovery, a positive way out of migraine. I love a good sale. Furniture Village. The sale behind a great looking home. End Sunday. I want an immediate lift. For me, nothing beats Revitalift. L'Oreal Revitalift Double Lifting. One, a tautening gel with Protensium. Two, an anti-wrinkle cream with Pro-Retinol A. It immediately tautens skin and reduces the appearance of wrinkles. Revitalift Double Lifting. And now, step into the future of eye care with new Revitalift Double Lifting Eye. It reduces the appearance of wrinkles and immediately tautens the skin of the upper eyelids. New Revitalift Double Lifting Eye from L'Oreal Revitalift. For an eye-opening new look. The runaway train came down the track and she blew. The runaway train came down the track and she blew. The runaway train came down the track. The whistle wide, the throttle back. We've reduced our Weight Watchers tuna fillings to just one Weight Watchers points value per can. It's a move that's proved rather popular. Nissan X-Trail with all-mode 4x4i. Extremely capable. 
I spent three years running. This is where it ends. The Born Ultimatum. It's party time at Claridge's for the F Word season finale, and the king of comedy is here. Walked <laughs> to the restaurant the other week carrying a stag. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Gordon's lambs make a final appearance. I thought the lamb was excellent. And Johnny Vegas lowers the tone. Bringing working class into these kitchens. Another chance to see the F Word season finale Tuesday at nine on More Four. I don't like to watch my own work because I'm afraid that I'll say, "What was I thinking?" or "What?" Look how long I took to say one line. The only one, if I'm trying to find something on television and I see Young Frankenstein on, I say, oh, I want to see the end of that scene. That was a good scene. I like that one. Craig David and Dave Matthews playing from the heart of British music, live from Abbey Road in an hour. First on more for though, another case for Brenda Lee in the closer. We compare the market for insurance so you can see a dramatic difference in the same car. Comparethemarket.com sponsors drama on four. Mm-hmm. 